Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Anders Mill Knits. I'm your host, Emily, and you can find me on Ravelry as aka Millie and on Instagram as aka Millie907. You can sometimes find the show notes at andersmill.wordpress.com. Andersmillknits.wordpress.com. <laughs> You can also find us on the um, Apple Podcast Connection, YouTube, I mean not YouTube, iTunes, ooh, I don't know what it's called, um, but you can find us there, <laughs> find me there, and let's see, where else, I have no idea what number of episode this is, so let's just go for it, come here, come here Watson, he needs to bark, he says. Um, let's start off with some case notes, shall we? You might be wondering what I'm wearing. I have my Veronica sweater all done, or cardigan, I guess you could say. It's very much like a blanket on me, and I've been wearing it most of the morning to keep me warm on this dramatic morning. Uh, yesterday was 87 degrees, and today I think it's gonna top out at 67 <laughs> so we got a 20 degree drop in highs uh in my area today so i've been keeping this warm as i worked this morning and now as i'm podcasting but you know what i usually because i'm nervous i usually get rather hot and warm when i'm podcasting so i might have to take it off soon but a little bit of deets on this guy this is the veronica sweater sweater cardigan <laughs> Forgot who it's made by, uh, the patterns by, so I'll list that down here. Um, the uh, yarn is by Dragonfly Fibers in the Mushroom Hunting colorway. It's a DK weight superwash. I would recommend that you actually use something that's not superwash, something that has a little toothiness to it, a little bit of structure. Mine is wonderful as a blanket, not so wonderful as like an architecturally show off y kind of garment. Um, I'm learning. On garments garments are a hard one for me but I would say actually you know what would be a really good one a cascade 220 not the superwash but a cascade 220 period on this one would be perfect because it would keep the structure on it um let's see what else I knit this on a US size 8 and I knit the rib and everything just according to plan I didn't really change anything yeah I didn't change anything so it was knit from sleeve to sleeve as I said last week from sleeve to shining sleeve and it's like a poncho almost uh, although it's open the arm openings are way far back so it's actually kind of difficult to get on because you got to find the arm openings which are huge so it shouldn't be a problem but once you have it on then you got to finagle the collar up where you want it at least with mine because like I said the yarn is kind of too smooth it's lovely I do love it but if, if you're looking to actually get the design execute the design as intended by the project I would suggest using a toothier yarn don't use superwash okay uh, and I think that's about it I can insert some photos here There is my finished object. So I took those pictures. Actually, my husband took those pictures of me last Sunday, I want to say it was. I think it was Sunday when I finished this. Uh, actually, when I took it off of the blocking wires and I had seamed up the whole... This is it. This is it for the seaming. Literally, like, what is that? Two inches? Just right here. <laughs> so, so hard to do. But yeah, I am getting kind of hot, so maybe I'll take that off right now, now that I'm moving around. I started with six skeins of yarn with this, and I ended up using four, maybe, I guess, five skeins total. Um, 
of mu the mushroom hunting colorway because I've got about a half a skein of each left. I've got a good amount so I could make some things for other people now out of that. So that's my first finished object. Now my second finished object is something I've been working on for a very long time and I've been very frustrated that I didn't have it off my needles and I fell out of love with it and then I fell back in love with it, then out of love with it, then back in love with it. I haven't trimmed the ends even though they've been w woven in because I just literally took it off the blockers like two minutes before I started recording but I have my bendy arrow all done and it is marvelous it is huge there's no way it's like twice my wingspan there's no way I could um, hold this up in one piece for you but you start off here and you're knitting straight up and you're knitting one of those um triangles Again, I don't know who this is by, so I'll put it down here. Forgot. And then you switch to doing stripes, still working on the triangle, and then you switch to doing some solid blocking. And then, all of a sudden, you switch from doing that to going back to only knitting on this side of the, of the uh, triangle, and you knit all the way up doing this. Um... I have no idea what yarn I used either. Oh my gosh, this is bad, guys. This is really bad. Because people are gonna ask me. I don't know, <laughs> but it's lovely. So let's see what it looks like. Well, right when I took it off the blockers, I immediately went like this, and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so lovely to just go like this and wear as a blanket, kind of, uh, as a true shawl kind of a thing. So there's that. But then, you know, I use, and this is a, a crescent type-ish shawl. So yeah. Ooh, look at me. <laughs> I look like Amelia Earhart, only not. Yeah. Anyone for flying lessons? Or anyone for tennis? <laughs> anyway, um, I feel very preppy like that. Let's see what it looks like when I go like this. Oh, kind of, it's already looking like I'm wearing a bib. Already looking like it. So you can wear it like this. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> That's not bad. It's usually how I wear my shawls when I'm going out. So, because my neck gets pretty cold. Actually, it doesn't. I've got lots of hair back there. Actually, it's not a lot of hair. Well, it is a lot of hair. It's just very fine. So, there's a number of ways to wear it. I'm very pleased with it. I know this is Malintosh in the azure colorway, I want to say. Hold on. Actually, I know exactly what one that is. It is... Oh, no, of course not. No, I don't, because I put it up on my cork board. I'll insert a video here. So I mentioned my cork board of uh, uh, business cards and yarn tags, and so this is what I've got. So we've got some panda wool, some pearl and plum. I love their bags. Peggy Jane Fibers loves her uh, love her yarn. Hilary Parkin or Lulu Rowe. Oh, I haven't ordered anything from her. She's somebody I met. Abundant Earth Fibers. Jill Draper Knits, uh, The Creative uh, Obsession, A Needle Runs Through It. This is a local tea shop to me. I want to go and interview them for the podcast. Who knows if I ever will. Whimsical You, Sweet Georgia Yarns, which I love. Happy Feet or Plymouth Yarns, something my niece made me. The Cozy Knitter. What's behind that? Oh, Gail's Art. Uh, we've got No Makers, who I love. Cat Mountain Fibers, who I just knit that hat out of. Greenwood Fiber Works. Country Yarns. Northwest Wools, which is one of my LYSs. White Birch Fiber. We've got Malabrigo, which is what I'm knitting the socks out of it. The Azure Colorway. Dragonfly Fibers, which I knit my sweater out of just now. Curvy Wurby Yarns, which I just finished knitting in the what in tarnation colorway? Don't know where that thing is. Then last year I knit these pair of socks out of 
whatever, <laughs> I forgot. And then the rusted stitch from my good friend Steph, or Stephanie, uh, or she's hot pink socks. And then I've got some of my cute, um, what are they called? Tags. Oh, and then coastal yarns, which I love. They're out uh, in um, uh, Cannon Beach. So that's my cork board so, board so far of goodness. And then below my cork board, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's the Bendy Arrow Shawl. I'm very pleased with it. There you go. That is two down, two to go. So I finished two pairs of socks this week. One of them I've been working on pretty steadfastly for a while now. And you'll remember them. There you go. Oh, sorry. I've got some I still haven't trimmed in I haven't trimmed in the ends on these either. I've woven them all in, but I don't ever trim off my ends until I'm completely uh, done. So this is Kirby Werby. Kirby Werby in the Granny Bell color. You think I'd remember by now, right? In the Granny Bell colorway. And the they're they're like fraternal twins, you know. So this is, I would say, like we, we've talked about in the past, intentional pooling, not, um, not striping and not micro stripes. I like it. And this was a gift from my good friend Hot Pink Socks. Thank you so much, Steph. I really appreciate it. And those were knit on size U.S. size zero needles. Um, I used a, I used the um, magic loop method. Uh, I did 30 stitches around, and then I did a two by two, no three by two rib, three by two rib, until I got to where I wanted to start the heel, which I did as the um, fish lips kiss heel, which is my favorite. It's probably not my favorite to wear, but it's just so easy to do when I'm on the run. I think my favorite to wear would be my heel, the 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 partridge. I have partridge, heel flap, and gusset. Um, those just fit me to a T, but I hate knitting it. I hate it. I hate picking up those stitches. I hate the gusset. I like the heel flap. I hate the gusset, though. It seems like it never ends. And I get so bogged down with it. Ugh. Anyway. Then another Kirby Warby, and this is an oldie but a goodie. You'd think it would have been done by now. But my Wotton Tarnation socks are finally done. My afterthought everything. Now, these are weird, but okay. Um, this toe, uh, foot heel I did as a traditional afterthought heel. This one I did as my trying something new in the round, making it up as I go. Both fit good or well. This fits better. Look at the difference though, right? It's this very strange. Cause this one's like a mouth or more like cup shape, strangely. Watson, come here, come on. Yeah, wouldn't be an episode without Watson barking now, would it? You wanna come here and say hi to everybody? That's a no? You don't want to? Well, that's just mean. Where's your toy? Why don't you go get your toy? He's just going like this to me. Get your toy. Get your toy. Where is it? <laughs> I'll probably cut that part out. Anywho, it's very interesting. This one kind of looks like a booby. You know, with the pointy. Look, Marilyn Monroe heel. Ooh, if I ever sell this, I'll call it my Marilyn Monroe. Or just Monroe heel. So those are my FOs. Oh, you guys already know about this, right? How, oh, he found his toy. Knit on size zero, 30 stitches around. Uh, this one I did a one by one cuff for about like an inch or two stripes. And then I just knit solid until I got to the other end. Then I, tradi uh, I, I physically cut the yarn and put on the toes and then cut the yarn and put on the heels. It was a whole process 
And at the time I said, oh, I might do this again. I'm not doing it again. Unless I put in some waste yarn, I ain't doing that again. I'm sorry. It just, <sighs> the thought of cutting my yarn became so daunting to me that I just never did it. Watson, stop it. So it just sat there waiting to be completed for a good month or two before I finally completed them. Watson, stop it. So, okay, here, I'll throw your, your ducky. Robber ducky, you're the one. You make squeaking twice as fun. <laughs> At least for Watson. I am such in a weird mood. Can you tell? I mean, I don't know. This is my second episode recording today. Um, I recorded a special episode earlier for the 24 Days of Cheer. <laughs> Can you hear him squeaking? <laughs> leave it. No, you didn't leave it. Sit. Thank you. Uh, and so this is my second episode um, recording. It's a little touch and go. I'm a little impatient right now because I'm like, I've already done this. <laughs> Only I haven't. I haven't talked about any of these subjects. So, But there's my parade of FOs. I have four guys and they're all major. So it kind of left me with nothing on the needles. So, what did I do? But I cast on something. Um, and I'm dream knitting as well. So, I cast on a sock for my husband for Christmas. Um, this is, again, <laughs> out of the same yarn, I believe, as I knit this with. <laughs> uh, anyway. On this one, I'm doing a three by two rib. It's very hard to see. Well, maybe you can't see it. There you go. I'm doing a three by two rib. It looks black there, but it's not. It's a deep, deep blue. So what I did here is, is I even wrote it down so I wouldn't have to remember. So I cast on 64 stitches, a three by two rib for five and a half inches. Then I increased four stitches on the back, setting a, switching to straight stocking net on the back. Uh, 32 stitches to set up for the as I put it FLK heel so that's the fish lips kiss heel and so then I proceeded to knit the fish lips kiss heel with those additional increases because my husband's got a big heel he's flat footed but he's got a big heel so I wanted to make sure that fit properly and then I've started knitting straight down the foot Barely. I've increased one set of the four four stitches that I've increased that I increased for the heel. So I'm just gonna every two rounds I'm gonna be decreasing those four until I get back to 64 stitches all the way around. And I'm continuing the three by two rib on the front of the sock all the way to the toe. My hopes in this is that it'll be tight enough for my husband. He likes a lot of neg <laughs> negative ease on his socks, but then again, he gets a little annoyed when they're too negative. So I'm knitting these on size zeros and I've just increased by four stitches. So I'm thinking instead of my usual 60, which believe it or not, he likes my 60 stitches around when I knit on size ones. So anyway, we're gonna try this out. I'm hoping this will work and he doesn't know. He hasn't even asked me. He's seen me knitting on this. He has not even asked me about my socks what in the world he usually asks me about my knitting he has not asked me once about these socks it's kind of annoying because i want to prevaricate is that the word prevaricate or just can't remember the word anyway i want to try and say oh it's for my, my brothers or something like that and then he'll be surprised at christmas He'll be surprised either way. It's just in my head. I've had this, I've got this whole scene playing out about how I'll like redirect him so he won't think they're for him. <laughs> so this is in my baggie. And I like this bag for my, when I'm on the go working, the snap closures are really easy and it just, it goes down into absolutely nothing. You do have to be careful. I have stabbed myself with my needles once or twice because they have come back through one of the openings. The danger is worth it though for the ease of carrying this around. 
So that's what I'm knitting now. That's it. That's all I've got left. Because I finished this guy, the bendy arrow, yesterday. And then I finished everything else. Literally all of these guys I finished on Sunday. I mean, I'm an insane woman. And that's with something that I'll talk about in a little while having come up. Um, but I, but like I said, I have been dream knitting. Now I did, I was gifted a beautiful pattern by one of my friends on Ravelry and she gifted me the nutmeg ginger card, uh, sweater. It's got this beautiful miniature shawl collar. I want to look to see if anybody's transformed it into a, oh, and there's some detailing on the shoulders that you can't see. You know what? Never mind. I'm not going to. I'm going to knit this as pattern. Every time I try to change something, I mess everything up. I'm going to be knitting the 47 and a half inch bust. Oh yeah. I just felt myself up. You saw it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I'm going to be casting this on today. What am I casting it on with you ask? The teal. This is, um, oh my freaking gosh. Why is it I don't know anything, guys? Hold on one second. Okay, so I know what this is now. This is Miss Babs in the Yowza What a Skein uh, base, 100% superwash merino wool. Oh my gosh, I'm doing superwash again? Ooh, I better check to make sure that everybody else says this is good. Anyway, this is 560 yards and an 8 ounce um, braid. And I've got three of them. Plenty for this. Um, so technically that's six skeins of regular worsted weight. Yeah. So I've got plenty of yarn for this sweater. I just want to then. I've been awaiting this pattern for over a month now, I think. This was given to me by another friend of the podcast. It's the camera, can, camera, camera sweater? Cardigan? I am so excited to knit this. And this is um, a knit along. It's not necessary. It's not a mystery. I've talked about it before. It's not a mystery. She, but she is only going to release a portion of it each week starting October 1st, which is only in two days. So I'm super excited by that. If you can see all of the details on it. Maybe. Anyway, so I want to I wanna start knitting this, but what am I going to knit it out of? I am going to knit this out of my Knit Fix Capra DK weight in the Topaz colorway. So it's this beautiful brown. And it's got a makeup of 85% wool and 15% cashmere. And in each one of these skeins, I've got 123 yards. So it's a 50 gram skein and or cake. So I've got one, one, two, three, four, five, ten, twelve. So twelve times a hundred. I don't even know. I just don't even know. <laughs> okay, well, let's see if I can do it. Okay. 300, um, 300, 600, 900, uh, 1300, uh, 1600, made close to 1700 yards. Wow, I did that. I did that all in my head. I am not good with math, and I did that. Watson, stop it. You're really starting to annoy me. Okay, so I'm knit. I'm gonna be knitting this too, as soon as October. Actually, I can start swatching immediately. So even if I can't cast on my um, nutmeg ginger, I can at least cast on my camera. Camera, camera. I think it's camera. But, oh, well, cast on as in I can swatch for it. So I'm gonna be doing those. I'm gonna be figuring out these sweaters today because I'm casting them on. So what does this mean for Christmas knitting? I just don't know. I'm always going to be knitting socks. So I could knit some more socks for Christmas. But not everybody's going to be getting that if I do that. Oh, my. I had to 
open the door because I was hot, believe it or not. And now he's just being a bad boy. And now you guys can see his horrible haircut that I gave him. Absolutely horrible. So bad that I did not take a picture of it to share with anybody. Yeah. You're trying to say you're sorry to me? Yeah. Anyway, I don't know what all this sweater knitting means for Christmas. I'm just not going to put myself in that position this year. I usually do. I don't think I did last year either, strangely enough. Or did I knit? I think I knit all my... I think I knit my sister's and my mom shawls and other people's socks. I think I did do Christmas knitting last year. I have a horrible memory. Um, I might not do Christmas knitting this year. Except for, for my husband. And who knows if it's going to be for him either. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I mean, Christmas knitting sounds good and all, but my, the um, pressure it puts on you, I would rather knit things for my family year round and just give them to them willy nilly, you know, like, surprise, you get a pair of socks today. Why? Why? Because it's Tuesday and you deserve it because you're my family member and I love you. You know, that kind of thing rather than, um, rather than putting the pressure on to knit all of the Christmas things. So who knows? I know. I'm sorry if that's disgusting to you guys. We <laughs> Watson, other people don't need to know about our really close relationship. Yeah, they're watching you. <laughs> and now he's got lipstick on him. So that's what I finished, what I'm currently working on, and what my dream knitting is, and what will be current whips later on today. So, um, what is, what do, what do I have in my toolbox? So, in my toolbox, I got another yarn box. Get it? Toolbox, yarn box. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, this one I'm not too thrilled about. I'll just be honest. I got a Shell, Shell Ridge Yarns Windermere Bulky is the base in the colorway Lapis. It's very smooth. It's like creepy smooth. That, that's horrible to say. I'm sorry, uh, Shell Ridge Yarns. I don't mean to be a jerk to you. This base is just not my cup of tea. This color is just off from the usual blues that I like. I can't even see making a hat or anything for any of my siblings or my mom or actually my mom would never wear a hat. But I just I don't know. I might I might have to destash this if anybody would. Uh it's 185 grams, 225 yards. So this is a bulky weight. It's pretty bulky. So, let's see, 80% superwash merino, and this is odd, it's 20% nylon, isn't that interesting, for a bulky weight? I mean, it's not a terrible blues color, but, you know, I'm more of a, this kind of a blue, where it's almost black than this. I like grayish blues as well, <laughs> which is funny, because right here, there's an interesting one, you know, I like these kinds, not... Not this. This is an expression fiber arts. She used to live in Alaska. Now she lives out east somewhere. You guys know her. She's the one. She's this pu beautiful, beautiful. She's this beautiful, like, um, super skinny, uh, blackish brown hair, I believe. Lady, she puts out a lot of, um, free crochet and knitting, uh, designs with her yarns and stuff. She's got lovely yarns. I have my unicorn one in here somewhere. But anyway, that's what I got in my yarn box this month. Thanks, Mom! I have no idea how many more of these I'm getting, but I like it. It's fun. Being introduced to new dyers and stuff, and new companies. Then, you guys pro some of you on are on Instagram, and you saw my um, dilemma that I had. I had found the per the company that I wanted to order from using my um, birthday gift card. Finally. I mean, here, uh, here my birthday was the end of July and now we're in October. No, end of September, October. And I hadn't found it yet. But 
I did finally, and it's the yarn jar. And this is what I ended up getting with your guys' help. Oh, I just need to take it out. The... I like it because it looks like a gumball, you know? Oh my freaking gosh. This is the cupcake colorway, isn't that right, Emily? Yes, this is the cupcake way. Watson, what are you doing? Come here. He was doing something bad, I know it. What is with him today? Is it because I'm hot podcasting in a different location in the house or something? But look at this pink. Oh, that ballerina pink. With then, then it's got purples and oranges and pops of chartreuse yellow. Highlighter yellow, I guess we could say. And dark green and little blips of blue. So there's a solid stripe and then there's a speckled stripe. I just love this. I'm having a really hard time not casting this on right now. I don't know why I'm resisting. Why don't I just do it? Maybe it's because I have a whole cubby full of <laughs> self-striping yarn. So, and it came with, this is super cute, came with a little cupcake project minder. So I got that. I probably, I should knit this first before I say this, but I probably will be ordering from them again. You know. So that's what I have in my um, toolbox. Uh, besides from that, craft-wise, I'm getting ready to start working on my uh, advent calendar swap. And I've got two partners for this swap, which I'm super excited about. I love both of them. And it was just my luck, you know. We, uh, we had one person who needed to drop out. Um, it wasn't working out for them, and that's fine. And at the time, I didn't know if I had any angel swa uh, swappers available. So I just, I just grabbed hold of that um, free swapper and claimed her as mine. Now we're becoming really good friends. We've connected on Instagram and all kinds of stuff. So, and then I've got another swap partner too. And then on top of that, I decided that, you know, while I'm doing this, I think I'm going to knit my best, I'm mean, make my best friend an advent calendar too. Emily doesn't do anything by halves in case you haven't noticed. I'm a little cray cray. So this afternoon I'm going to be making, okay, I think this, this is about, a, this is an eight out, this is an eight gram ball of yarn. So that's a little too much. It's one gram too much. So, but I am going to be making um, three packages with all of my minis that I have around the house. This is just what I have just right here. I've got a lot of them and I'm just, and a lot of leftovers and things like that. And I'm just going to start making my minis to go in these. And then I have some fabric that I'm going to be making into the packaging. And I'm going to be getting that going. So that's what I, my plan is as far as craft-wise. That's a lot to be doing this afternoon. And I just want to say that whenever I say that I'm going to be doing something, I hardly ever do what I say I'm going to do on this podcast. I don't know. I think maybe it's when I verbalize it. I'm just like, eh, I don't need to now. We're good. I'm a weirdo. So I don't know. There's sweater knitting to be done. There's crafting for my swap partner to be done. There's um, editing of this podcast to be done. All kinds of stuff to be done. I just don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to really put my pressure on much pressure on it. I got the whole evening ahead of me and there you go. Um, so why don't we do a week in review really quick, the weeks in review. Like you saw, I trimmed Watson uh, because we were going to have a flash heat wave, this, and we did this last week, and I just couldn't see my way clear to spending the money, especially after I just came back from my vacation back home, um, to go to take him to the groomer. So I decided... <sighs> last weekend to groom him myself. This is probably the third time I've ever done that. The last time I did it, I had my husband's help, which was great. Um, this time I just did it on my own. Not so great. I mean, I did a really good job, but then again, I didn't. I gave him a razor burn, uh, burn on his bum, guys. And he's been walking with his legs far apart and I just felt so bad. <laughs> TMI. Am I totally, but I've been doing things like giving him a bath in um, 
that special salt water that you uh, salt water that ha it's not you know it's supposed to bring down swelling then i've been using a a cooling pad uh, an ice pack on his uh, bum too and he really likes that um so for a while there he couldn't even walk down this this is how bad it was he wouldn't even walk down the stairs to go outside i had to carry him and then um, he would go do his business and then he would immediately sit down because he just couldn't handle it. And so I would have to carry him back upstairs. I'm a bad mommy, doggy mommy. He's better. He's very happy now. I switched him to, the, to a combination of the raw foods diet. So we're giving him um, raw turkey and cranberry mix with his... Um, traditional dry foods and just until the dry food runs out and then we're going to switch only to raw foods and then I mix in in the morning I mix in a little bit of coconut oil as well and I mix it all together it looks really disgusting and I give that to him every morning and then in the evening I do the same process just minus the coconut oil and his coat is so soft and gorgeous and sh gorgeous gorgeous and shiny lustrous you know how they say in the romance novels her lustrous hair filled the palm of my hand <laughs> so you know um, I've been concentrating on that and uh, keeping Watson healthy then I started a new job I've ca I have my old job still and I still love it I'm doing it um, I just happened to notice there's this farm that I pass by on my way to Tualatin if I take the country roads which I generally do because I hate I-5 um, and there's this farm called Lee Farms and they've been having a um, now hiring sign out for a couple months now so I just decided one day that I would stop in and see what I needed to do to or what kind of jobs they were hiring for and see if I could help them on the weekends and lo and behold I got the job and I started last weekend and it is so fun it's a lot of hard work though so Lee Farms is um, a family owned and operated farm since 1869 now that's a long history in my area of the of the world I guess you could say and so they're very proud of that. And people are very excited around here that they get to go to a farm that's been continuously owned by the same family since that time. And they used to be traditional farmers, but they discovered that it was just not economical uh, if they wanted to keep the land and keep it productive and keep everybody fed and well-maintained. They needed to switch things up. So they turned themselves into um, a kind of like a country fair kind of uh, farm. Um, there's a specific name for it, and I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, so every fall, they have a harvest fair there with the, the pumpkin patch and the corn maze and the hay maze and hay rides. We've got a balloon, ba I mean, a bouncy balloon, which is huge. It's so much fun. You should see the kids jumping on it. We've got this really scary two-story tall slide that go you go lightning fast down. Um, we've got the animals that they can pet. We've got the Go-Tell Six, so the goats, and people love the goats. And then we've got Watson, come here. We've got pony rides. So what do I do? Well, um, I've done a little bit of everything already, but my main job is to be in the store or doing um, admissions so people can pay to come on the farm on the weekends. So last night though, I went and helped out with a closing shift and I cleaned their industrial kitchen because this morning they were gonna do, a, they're cooking up some gluten-free pies. And oh my gosh, guys, their, their goodies that they make there are so freaking good. I got to take home some of the pumpkin donuts last night and I gave them all to my neighbors and stuff and we were just like the donuts just melt in your mouth you don't even have to chew them they're that soft and that's them after being having been made 12 hours previous so they're not even stale and I'm just like how in the world do they accomplish this stuff and I love the family. <laughs> it's so funny. People keep on asking me if I'm a member of the family. And I'm like, I don't look anything like them. Those people are in shape, gorgeous, brown-haired beauties. And with this very, like, hawk-like features, with, but are very 
striking and gorgeous. You know, they're not, they're not sharp. But me, you know, chubby cheeks, lots of bosoms and lots of belly, <laughs> blonde hair. No, I'm not a family member. <laughs> but I like to tell people now that they've adopted me or have adopted them. And people are like, oh, okay, that's weird. <laughs> So I've been do I did that last weekend. I did I'm going to be doing that again this weekend, so that's pretty darn fun. And besides from that, I've been working up a storm trying to play catch up from my vacation. I've got a lot of work. Um let's see. I've gotten a lot of new clients. Just today I've gotten two new clients. Uh and so I'm going to be working on those next week. I started working on them today. Who are we kidding? But, by the way, I'm petting Watson. You can't see him, but I'm petting him. <laughs> there he's his head. Uh, so, you know, work's good. Um, things are clipping along. Yeah. Things in my personal life are still kind of wonka do. Won't really get into it. Oh, okay. Here's the big thing I needed to tell you about. I started insulin shots this week. So, actually, I'm pretty excited about it. This morning... My glucose reading was at a good range. It was a really good range. I was so happy. And it's the first time since I've been diagnosed with diabetes that it's been at a good place. And I was like, oh. And they've got me on a very low dose at night before I go to bed of insulin. And the But I just wanted to share that. That's, that's what's been happening the last week. And, uh... Oh, and I've upped my water intake. I was doing 80 ounces of water a day, and now I'm doing over 100. So that's been good, too. I'm hoping that helps. So we shall see. All right. Well, that's all I've got on my docket today. Next episode, I'll be pulling for the um, Double Dip Cal. A prize for the month of August and September so tune in for that and in the meantime everybody make sure to knit what you love and love what you knit <laughs>